first song with the band, okay? Come on up, Presley. Thank you for the blessing of getting us through another week. Thank you that if we are facing trials, you are with us every step of the way. We come to you now, humbly with open hearts, ready to worship you, to know you, and to grow in our faith with you. We thank you that you are at work in our lives. Thank you that you're so quick to forgive us when we ask. Thank you that you guide us and encourage us. Be the people you want us to be. We ask for more of you in our lives, God, and less of the influences of the world around us. Help us keep our eyes up. We pray not, for, not only for every member of our congregation, for the world around us, that wherever you are, there will be blessings. We pray for your presence to not only fill Gilgal, but out in Port Paul and the world beyond, that people will feel you and long to be near you, that when they look out for you, they will not only find you, but find such peace in you. We pray for our evangelism team that go out into the streets of Port Paul every week, Help them, Jesus, to be the beacon in this world for you. Only you know what's in the heart of every person. Please give our evangelism team prophetic insight into the lives of those that engage with them. Place in the team's hearts and minds the words or images that will help people see it. You want to be engaged in we pray for every person the dream approaches that you will be already at work in softening the people's hearts to you. As the team steps out in faith, Lord God, bless them and guide them. We also pray for both Martin and Caroline as they leave this week to go on holiday. We pray that you will get them both back and be a safe We also pray for both your love and blessings for both Martin and Caroline. We ask for your spirit to settle over them, that when they return, they will be renewed by their trip. We thank you, Lord God, for that. Thank you that you are our God. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, thank you, everyone. So we're going to hand over to the band, and we are going to be singing Sing to the Lord. So if I hand them over to you, thank you very much.
afraid I've got more to share with you so I'm going to be telling you about what's kind of coming up for our young people um, wait for the ladies to kind of get the slides up so you don't have to keep looking at my face you will get to see images as well um, but it's just to kind of give you a heads up of what we're kind of preparing for the next few months that are kind of coming up um, and I'm hoping that all of you at some point will be able to help us out we would be grateful for any help with the next few things that are coming up right. okay so you're ready for the next one Okay, so next week we are starting our very first breakfast club for all our young people. Um, we are going to do a charge of 50 pence for each of our young people, but this is so that we can provide a range of different foods. Um, I think if you speak to my mum, she's the lady over there, if you just give everyone a wave, <laughs> she has provided us with sheets, which means you can kind of tick all the different lovely food that you enjoy. So things like if you really enjoy croissants, that is on the list. If you enjoy, say, toast with lots of chocolate spread, that's on the list. But it kind of gives us a head up of what you enjoy eating prior to next week. It also means that... If if we continue with our breakfast club we will be able to buy ranges of different games that you will be able to come and enjoy prior to Sunday club sorry there is an age restriction it is just for children please don't turn up if you're an adult because I will not have enough food for everyone if you want to stay with your children next week we are going to be doing tea and coffee as well um, but I am aware that you may want to go home continue getting ready prior to coming back to church okay Okay, so we are planning to kind of do a 150th anniversary family fun day, but also kind of like an open day to kind of welcome the community to us as well. Um, I am going to say that we would like to try and do it fancy dress of any time period over the last 150 years. This is not an age restriction. I would just like to make that clear. If you would like to come dressed in, say, as a skinhead from the 80s, maybe you want to dress as a suffragette, maybe you would like to come dressed in clothes from the Second World War, whatever it is that takes your fancy, over the last 150 years, you will be more than welcome to come dressed up. We are kind of looking at doing things like um, a Victorian fair, so things like face painting will be happening, hook a duck, I've got coconut shy down as a possible option, we are trying to do possibly a bouncy castle as well, I don't know if we'll be, have like an age restriction on that, but there might be <laughs> if you want to enjoy bouncy castles. We also kind of want to do things like a ticked out bean booth, maybe um, a photo booth as well, so you and families can enjoy having photographs together. Um, and hopefully, you know, there will be different vendors that will be offering, say, candy floss, I, I don't know, um, possibly even like a hot dog stand. We may also be doing like um, a craft table because we have our beautiful stained glass window. It'd be really nice to be able to everyone kind of go and making their own stained glass window to tend to take home with them as a remembrance from the day. Um, also, I think if I'm right, that's about it for that. Um, I will also be kind of asking all the different schools if they would like to come down and check us out as well. Um, but that's for future planning. But 
if you would like to take part or you would like to come and help us out, we would love for you to come and join us. Um, please either speak to Catherine or myself. It would be wonderful to have you on the team with that. Even if it's you don't want to stand at the front and say anything to anyone, but ideally you'd kind of like to help out with one of the stools or maybe you've got amazing music choice from 150 years, that would be amazing as well. It would just be lovely to have anybody on board with that. Okay, so our young people, those that are with us, you know, are now going to be going to Spree, I think, for the first time in two years. I think it's back up and running. And, um, you know, we are going away for the weekend, which will be amazing if the weather is lovely. I'm sure we're having a brilliant time, even if it's raining, because I hear there's different things. I think last time they had... Am I right in thinking there was like different food? There were activities of like climbing up walls. I think one of the girls was telling me there was hot tubs and things for the kids as well. Um, so they are going to be having an amazing time. But I know maybe closer to the time we will be asking if anyone could donate different foods and things for us to be able to take for that weekend for our young people as well. Um, I'm right. I think that's it for that one. And lastly, our Holiday Bible Club is starting again this year. We are hoping to host it within the church. It would be lovely to be able to host it as a church for all young people. Um, I, I believe we're starting with just the primary school. It's not for secondary school lot yet. Um, but there will be a range of different activities to kind of get involved with, that, with the young people within the church for that as well. I'm hoping I can get all my teenagers to kind of volunteer to help us out. I promise I won't make you dress up unless all the adults are doing it at the same time. So you don't feel like you're being put on the spot. Um, but after that, because we're going to do it from the 26th of July until the 29th, so there'll be four days of that, and then on the Friday, the 30th, we are going to host like a family fun day down on the beach. So even if you want to come down and just enjoy having some fun, I think maybe we'll do a barbecue down on the beach, it is for anyone to kind of come down and join us. So anyone within the church, anyone within the community, it'd be lovely to kind of have you join us with that as well. Please bring your sun cream, because I think if it's July the chances are you might need your sun cream and possibly a hat as well, because I don't want anyone to go home burnt because of having fun down on the beach. Um, on the Sunday, on the 31st of July, we are then going to do an ice cream Sunday. Sunday. I'm hearing there's going to be lots of ice cream that comes with that, so please do not miss out on that. I don't think there's an age restriction on that one as well, so if you are an ice cream fan, please come along, please come and join us. See what the young people have been doing throughout the week, because I'm sure there will be lots for them to be able to tell you. We'll be able to share our experiences throughout the week, see what they've been getting up to, see if there's like any crazy activities they've been up to. Maybe there's been things they've been making that they want to show, so that will be an opportunity to kind of see what fun we've been having. Other than that, thank you very much. That is all I've got to present for our young people. Oh yes, um, our sign-up sheets for the Holiday Bible Club are currently on the front table. I think Linda has them. Amazing. So Linda, bless her, is going to hand them out. I think she managed to grab some of you last week. If you have them, please try and get them back to us. I think it's by the 15th of this month. Um, it would be wonderful if you can spare just a couple of hours. It'd be amazing to have you with us. Um, but as I said, you know, it, it's simply who is available and when they can help out. Uh, that is it, I think. I haven't missed anything out dates wise, I've managed everything. Um, oh, uh, the ha holiday um, family fun day, the 150th anniversary. I think it's said on there, but it's going to be on the 18th of June. Um, that's what we're aiming for, which I think is a Saturday. Um, so even if you don't want to help out, please come along for it. Please come and support us. It'd be wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to hand over to the video now. We're going to do a children's song called Our God is So Big and So Great. Um, if you are new to the church and you have young people with you who are infants, you are more than welcome to use Toddler Corner. If you are brand new and would like to join us, we are going to go after the song across into the hall. You are more than welcome to come and have some fun with us instead of staying in the service. All right, Martin. Right. Thank you very much. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God
And as they do so, our band are going to lead us in one more worship song. So let's join together to sing, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, as the children go out to Sunday Club.
Well, we're slowly settling back into our new home. Are you feeling at home here yet? Good, a little bit? The latest is the loop system is now working if you have a deaf aid. You can put it onto the little T on your hearing aid. Uh, and John at the back is saying to me that if uh, you are listening on your loop, on your hearing aid, can you give him some feedback later, whether it's too loud or too quiet, uh, so that we can get it just right for future Sundays. So John, just give a wave so everybody knows who you are. That John at the back there. Okay, so if you're using the loop aid, uh, please <laughs> let John know how well it's worked. We are also looking forward to a visit uh, to hear Franklin Graham speaking at the ICC, the International Conference Centre in Newport at the end of May. So we've got a little video for you to watch. you to know tonight that God loves you. I want you to know you can have a new beginning tonight. All of us have a vacuum, an emptiness that only God can fill himself. We've got more opportunity today than we've ever had to make the impact of Christ felt in every phase of life. looks good doesn't it who's coming quite a few of us we've got a bus booked there are still some empty seats on the bus if you would like to come on the bus to hear Franklin Graham in Newport uh, please speak with Gordon Gordon give a little wave Gordon's got his list there uh, for everyone who wants to, to sign up to come and it's on Saturday the 21st of May it is free, though we are saying to church members, if you'd like to make a little donation to cover the cost of the bus, uh, to speak with Gordon, but uh, anyone who's a visitor or a guest, we're not going to ask them for anything, okay? We just want people to, to hear the Christian message. So that's another thing to put in your prayers. The children have got lots of great things planned, haven't they? Don't you wish that you were eight or nine years old all over again? So you can join in with all of those things. Uh, and uh, they need help to run those things. So we're sharing little bits from our ministry teams each week of where there are places in this church where you can serve God if you're willing to. And it can be in little things or it can be in larger things. But every Christian is called to serve. We are saved to serve. We're going to hear our Bible reading as we think further about this, and Alison is bringing our reading this morning. Thank you, Alison. The reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all his holy people, throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. But just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. 
If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on behalf of the gracious favour granted us in our answer to our prayers of many. Amen. Earlier this week I was visiting one of our elderly members in a nursing home. And uh, this lady is now very forgetful and uh, can't remember uh, short-term memory uh, activities. And so I was looking for some means of having a conversation with her. She didn't remember me, even though I've been a pastor for over 12 years. So I looked around the room, looking for something that maybe I could feature on and focus. And uh, she had photos around the room, and one was with Warren Gatland. Uh, how many of you know who Warren Gatland is? British Lions and Wales coach at rugby. So I thought, well, you know, that must have been a special day. I'll ask her uh, you know, about this photo. And she couldn't remember anything about it. So I thought, well, what can I uh, use as a means of conversation with this elderly lady? And then I thought, well, I wonder if she remembers uh, the opening words of the 23rd Psalm. So I said, I wonder if you remember this verse from the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And you know what? All of a sudden, her face lit up and she recited all six verses of the 23rd Psalm from the old King James Version of the Bible with me, went all the way through it and we'd found something that connected for us. And it was just wonderful that some point in the past she'd learned that psalm off by heart and it was still with her even though she'd forgotten Warren Gatland, she'd forgotten her pastor, uh, she'd forgotten what she'd had for breakfast, but she still remembered the word of God, the scriptures. And then we spent a, a little bit of time together. I was mentioning old hymns that I thought, and she would complete some of the lyrics of these old hymns. And when it came to prayer, and after we prayed, she prayed with me the Lord's Prayer. And every word was still in her heart and deep within her. And it's important for us to get the word of God deep within us. So, We've been trying to learn a memory verse back in March before Easter. Do any of you remember it? Oh, now we're seeing where the rubber hits the road, aren't we? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Does anybody want to have a go? Can anybody remember the Bible memory verse? verse. Think Karen thinks she can. Let's have a look, Karen. It starts for... For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Is that it? That's it. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Oh, wow! Wow! Well done! Anybody else know you've heard it once? The reason I want us to, from time to time, stop and memorize verses, key verses, like this one, 
is that it's so important that the word of God becomes part of us. That God's truth really gets a grip in our hearts and our minds down deep inside. So it is well worth every now and again, maybe just once every three or six months, memorizing a key verse of scripture. And we've been looking at this verse from Ephesians 2 verse 10 because it is a key verse for our series of messages on the subject of know your shape. It tells us, it reminds us that when we give our lives to Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, when we're saved, he then goes on to shape us to serve him. And we have said that we're all different. We're all different shapes, different characters, very different individuals. But God knows us and loves us and wants us to be the best we can be for his glory. So we said, we've taken that word shape, and we said that God gives us spiritual gifts, both natural and supernatural. We said that God will put things on our heart, things that we are passionate about. And every one of us, it might be something different. For someone, it might be the environment. For somebody else, it might be sport. Uh, we're all different, but God has made us that way and wants to use us in these areas for his glory. We've talked about how God gives us different abilities. Some people are musical. Some people are mathematical. Some people are good with words. Some people are, uh, 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 are people who enjoy being up the front. Others are people who like to be doing things behind the scenes. But we have different resources and talents and skills. And God has made us that way for a purpose and for his glory. He has also given us very different personalities. Some people are extroverts, some people are introverts. Some people, uh, they are uh, uh, full-on, noisy, outward people. Others are very quiet and reserved. We're all different in our personalities. Today, I want us to think about how God also gives us different life experiences. And those life experiences shape us and enable us to become the people that God wants us to be so that we can better serve him and bring him glory in the world. It's quite easy for us to see how the, the joyful experiences, uh, the good experiences of life can, can shape us and encourage us. But I want us particularly to remember that the painful experiences and the hard experiences, that God has allowed them for a reason too. Because that shapes us, probably in a greater way than the easy and the joyful. This morning I want to remind us that God never wastes a hurt. And that when bad things happen in our life, and we're tempted to say, God, why have you let it happen to me? We may not understand it right then, but God is still at work, even in that very difficult, hard moment of our lives. And if we fail, if we have failures as well as successes, that our failures are never final, and God is with us in them and through them. You see, our, our life experiences, particularly our, our negative experiences, they shape us. And they can either make us a better person or a bitter person. But the choice is up to us. Will we walk through this situation with God and become a better person or without God and become a bitter person? Experiences will shape you one way or the other. Let's trust in God and have him with us so they shape us for the better and not for the worse. There's an old tale about a wise man and his student. And the student asks the, the wise man, how did you get to be so wise? And the wise man replied, I learned from my mistakes 
And I made a lot of mistakes. Wise people learn, don't they, when things go wrong. Stop and think, how can I do better next time? But you know what's even wiser than learning from your mistakes? Learning from somebody else's mistakes. It's a lot less painful, isn't it? Yes? Are you with me? I think this is why in, in the Bible we have so many people's personal life stories. Abraham, Moses, David, Peter, Paul, alongside Jesus. And it shows us their failures as well as their successes, their mistakes as well as those days when everything went wrong and right. So that we can learn from their experience too. And become wise so that God can use us for his glory. In the Bible, we find that we can learn spiritual sympathy through our painful experiences. So in Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 15 and 16, it says of Jesus, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. We see there both the real divinity and the real humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they are equally important that as the sinless Son of God, he died for our sins so that we could be forgiven. But as the very ordinary and human Son of Man, he entered into our human frailty so that he understands our struggles understands what we go through in our hardships, in our pains and our problems. So that now when we pray and reach out to God in heaven, there is a human part of God forever. Jesus, the Son of God, who is at the right hand of the Father, interceding with, for us with understanding and sympathy towards our struggles and our humanity. I find that so encouraging. That when I get it all wrong, there's a God who loves me and is willing to forgive me because he understands my frailty. Does that encourage you? And uh, just as we can now approach the throne of grace, let's come before God in prayer with confidence to receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need, is because Jesus understands, sympathizes, empathizes with all that we go through. Because he was tempted in his human nature, in every way, just as we are. This is amazing truth. We don't have a God who doesn't understand. We have a God who knows what it's like to be human. And he's compassionate. He's sympathetic. He's forgiving. Wow. What a wonderful God we serve. And he calls us to be the same towards others. To be sympathetic. To be understanding. To be willing to forgive. Because we all share this human condition. What a shame sometimes that we expect more of others than we would like others to expect of us. So Paul, in that letter that we had read for us at the beginning of our service, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. He says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father of compassion. The father of sympathy, of understanding. Who is the God of all comfort. Who wants to help people, not harm them. Wants to help people become better people. Not just to blame them and condemn them. He came with love to forgive. Which is what the cross is all about. And who, Paul says, comforts us in all our troubles. And then I like this, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Oh, take that in. Has, has it ever been a comfort to you, your faith? 
To know that there's a God who loves you and cares about you and wants to help you and understands and sympathizes and forgives. He says, now that you've received that, give that to others. The comfort you've received, comfort others with. There's a backstory to this. You see, the Apostle Paul was somebody who, while he had many successes, also had many failures. While he had many joyful days, also had many painful days. And he knew his share of struggles and suffering. And because God was there for him, he encourages the Corinthians to share God's comfort with each other. Paul was on his third missionary journey. He was in Ephesus. He'd been involved in a riot. He was afraid even of his, of his life. And yet God had blessed him and brought him through. Has God brought you through things? How wonderful it is then if we stand with each other in sympathy and understanding. Shaped by our experiences. I came across this little thing on Facebook this morning. The best teams are made up of a bunch of nobodies who love everybody, serve anybody, and don't care about becoming a somebody. I thought I'd like to change that from the best teams to the best churches. Are made up of a bunch of nobodies who love everybody, serve anybody, don't want to be a somebody. If we could kind of get that attitude and spirit within our fellowship, boy, God could bless us and use us, couldn't he? Well, it's not about us. It's about understanding everybody else. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, you're going through a bad time. God wants to help you. He cares about you. He loves you. We have a prayer corner some seats in the corner where some of our prayer ministry team go at the end of every service. If you've got a problem or a worry or an anxiety, if you're struggling with something, if there's pain in your life, be prayed for. We have a God who cares. And we want to be a church that cares. Maybe right now your life is going well. Maybe your team won yesterday. Then look around because there's an awful lot of other people for whom life is not going well at the moment. And if you see somebody who's going through a tough time, sympathize. Ask them how they are. Pray for them. Encourage them. Support them. That's what prayer corner is for. So first of all, we learn sympathy through our experiences we can also learn something about our spiritual security. You see, as I said, there's a backstory to what Paul is writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul was on his third missionary journey. He'd been ministering for a year and a half in a city called Ephesus, which is, or was in, in Turkey. There had been riots and a danger, and Paul and his companions, their life had been at risk. You can read all about it in Acts chapter 19. And so as Paul is writing from this time of great stress and of problems and of hardships and of struggles and even threat to his own life, he's able to say to them in verse 9, our, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. We are a resurrection people. Not even death can stop us if we're trusting in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive and we will live because of him. The resurrection, the cross and the resurrection are the heart of our faith. And Paul is reminded of that when he's facing death. And that is part of what comforts him. That even if he dies, well, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So there's no fear of death in Paul. Fear of dying. Dying can be painful. But not fear of death. Because he knows what comes after. So Paul here 
says what we've learned in this is we just got to trust in God. We've got to rely on God, not on ourselves. Christians were being persecuted. And Paul found that God would not let his faithful servants down. And he continues in verses 10 and 11. He has delivered us from such deadly peril. And he will deliver us. If you're in God's will, God will bring you through whatever you are going through. One of the great names for Christians in heaven is overcomers. We are overcomers. When we are doing God's will, when we are serving God in the way that he wants us to, there is nothing that can ultimately stop us, not even death itself. And Paul had grown in that understanding through his circumstances in Ephesus. Maybe there's somebody here today going through a very test testing time. Let me ask you first to check that your struggle and your suffering is not because of some sin in your life. Sometimes our wrong choices bring bad consequences. So sometimes our suffering is down to our sin. And if it's down to our sin, we need to confess it. We need to ask God to help us put it right. And we need to turn things around. But there are also those times when we're suffering not because of our sin, but because we're doing the right thing. Sometimes when you're doing the right thing, you're persecuted or attacked by the evil one, the devil, because you're doing the right thing. If you're doing the right thing, then remember this truth that whatever you're going through right now, God has allowed for a purpose and that the experience of this purpose will benefit you or somebody else along the way. God will bring you through. He will deliver you. He'll bring you to a point where this experience will have been worth it. Okay. One of my favorite verses. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So if you're following your calling, if you are in his purpose for your life, then everything that happens to you, God will use for good. It's an amazing truth, isn't it? God will bring you through. Keep trusting. Keep serving. Keep believing. It might take years, but God will bring you through. He will not let you down. He is faithful. He never fails. We fail often. Sometimes I've taken completely the wrong road and I have to turn my life back around. But God never fails. Yesterday, uh, as a pastor, I was ringing one of the elderly couples of our church who on Friday night heard that their grandson had died suddenly and unexpectedly and yesterday was a hugely dif difficult and busy day I couldn't go and visit them so I, I rang to speak with them and pray with them on the phone and this little elderly lady uh, I won't give you her name, but some of you know who it is. She said, I'm 80 on Monday. I gave my heart to the Lord. Sorry, she's more than 80. She said, I, I gave my heart to the Lord 80 years ago on Monday. So she's probably much older than, than 80. And she said she didn't understand why this had happened, that they'd lost their son this weekend. But she said, I'm holding on to a verse and a phrase in a verse from 1 Peter 1 verse 5. Where it talks about being shielded by faith. And she was weeping a little bit on the phone as she was talking to me. But she was trusting in Jesus even though she didn't understand it, didn't like it. Even though it was a painful experience, she was trusting in Jesus in it and through it. That's faith. That's what we need. 
And God will use that like he's using her testimony. Here in our church this morning. If she can do that, so can you. So can I. So somebody going through a very difficult time right now. Trusting God. If he's allowed it to come, it's for a purpose. You might not understand it. You might not understand it for years. You might not understand it till you get to heaven. But there's a purpose. And thirdly, so we learn sympathy. We learn security. And we learn about spiritual strategy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul thanks the Corinthians for their prayers while he was struggling in Ephesus. He says, yes, God has delivered us, but notice this, as you help us by your prayers, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the favour granted to us in answer to the prayers of many. There is a strategy here for coping with the struggles and the hardships and the disappointments and the problems and the failures and the mistakes. And that strategy is prayer. Pray for yourself. Get others to pray for you. Get your church to pray for you. Get people in other churches to pray for you. In answer to your prayers. The strategy is the power is released when people pray. And the confusion starts to become more clear. And the weakness is strengthened. And the problems are diminished by the power of prayer. Who believes in the power of prayer? Lovely to see so many hands going up. Make sure when you've got a problem, the first thing you do is talk to God. And the second thing you do is ask somebody else to pray for you. Whether it's in the prayer corner on a Sunday or put it on a prayer chain in the church or contact one of your mature Christian friends or your house group and make sure that you're covered in prayer. Paul writes to the Philippians, don't be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That sense of security comes from the strategy of praying. Do you see it? Thank God for the power of prayer. Maybe there's somebody here in church this morning you really need to be prayed for. Come and see us before you leave. When everybody else is having tea and coffee and biscuits and chatting, Come and find me, we'll come back in, we'll find a quiet corner and we'll pray. Prayer makes a difference. The Apostle Paul says sometimes those prayers don't make our problems disappear, but God gives us strength to cope with them. You need to be aware of this, okay? God doesn't always change the circumstances, sometimes he does. On many other occasions he changes us. Paul had a problem Physically, a thorn in the flesh. And he says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul goes on to say, when I'm weak, I'm strong because God is strengthening and helping me through this circumstance. Prayer is not just superstition and expecting everything just to instantly be changed for the better. God is working as we pray. Working out a purpose we might not yet understand. But if we trust him, one day we will. Okay, let me try to bring this uh, around to a, a practical illustration. Thai boxing. Like kickboxing. Well, it's more than kickboxing. It's, it's kind of all-round fighting. Uh, using your fists, your feet, your elbows, your knees, jumping, kicking, uh, doing all of the things that you can see on the screen. And the remarkable thing is that one of the best Thai boxers in North America, in the whole of the continent, is a man called Jake Peacock. And Jake he has no lower 
right arm. He was born with his right arm just below the, the elbow missing. Uh, it's a remarkable story. I don't know if you can see the picture there. Some of you might remember Jake Peacock's father, Gavin Peacock, who played football for Newcastle, Chelsea, Queen's Park Rangers, uh, and was a, a, a great footballer, and then went into Baptist ministry, uh, and is now a pastor in Calgary, in Canada. But Jake was born without the larger part of his lower right hand. And as he was growing up, that made him angry because people would talk about him, would pick on him, would make fun of him. Uh, and he got angry. So he channeled that into this Thai boxing uh, as a way of kind of releasing that in a safe way. And uh, then when he was 19, he became a Christian. He put his, his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I don't know if you can see here uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tattooed onto his chest. Uh, about making sure you're going God's way and not your own way. Trust in the Lord with all your understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. And he's now one of the best Thai boxing people in the whole of North America, uh, the USA and Canada. Not only that, but he runs a gym, trains others, and uses it all to point people to Jesus. God can take whatever has happened to us and use it for good, just as he has with Jake Peacock. So, let me... Uh, uh, it's classic, isn't it? When the minister says, I'm going to conclude, it's probably going to be another five minutes. I'll try not to be, okay? But to conclude, do you know your shape? Do you understand the spiritual gifts, the heart, the abilities, the personality, and the experience that God has placed in your life to make you the person that you are right now and that he is developing in you and wanting you to be so that he can use you for his glory. Do you know your shape? Remember that the local church is the shape sorter where everyone has a place, where no one is left out. Where everybody is needed and wanted. But you need to find your place. If you are unsure of how you could serve God in our church, Liz and Jackie have offered from the diaconate to meet with anyone who wants to have somebody pray with them and talk with them about how they could find ways to serve within our church life here at Gilgal. There's good invitation, isn't it? Why don't you take them up on it? So that you can not only know your shape, but know where you fit in. So that this church can be a better church. But the most important thing always is have you made Jesus Christ your saviour and Lord? We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. But first we need to make Jesus our saviour. And if you haven't asked Jesus into your life before, let me encourage you to do so today. I'll ask our worship team to come back. Are we going to start to respond to God's word in song and in prayer? If we can put the words of the song up on the screen, please, Shirley. If we could put the words up of the song. Lord, you have my heart. And I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Can you say that as a prayer as we sing it? Lord, I'm giving you myself. All my pains, all my problems. As well as my joys and my successes. Lord, I give you myself. I'm going to search for your will and your purpose in my life. Take my life and lead me on to be and do all that you've called me to be 
and to do. Let's sing that. We'll stay seated and sing this song just prayerfully and responsively to God as part of our response to his word today. He understands, he cares, he loves, he helps. If you're in church today and everything's wonderful for you, would you pray for those who are struggling that they might know the strength and the peace of God in whatever they're going through right now? We're going to let the music just play for a few moments as we just enter into that deeper time of prayer.
pray your healing into any heart or life that is hurting. Lord, we pray your presence, your peace, your power, your strength. Lord, we don't always understand when we're going through things why. Sometimes we can look back years later and understand. Lord, we might not know till we get to heaven, but we trust you. We know that you understand. We know that you sympathize. So, Lord, bring your healing and your help into our lives right now. Guide us and lead us on in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing our, our final hymn, Blessed Be Your Name, which talks about worshipping God, praising God on the good days and on the hard days. Let's sing his praise. us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord turn his face towards us and give us his peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.